Is it working? Okay. Hello. How about now? Is that better? Is that better? Ron, can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? No. Something now? Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order for the uh, business meeting for uh, July 22nd, 2019. Uh, we do have a quorum. Two commissioners are present. And Mr. Lamont, would you lead us in the flag salute this morning? Thank you, and Peter, and, and welcome everyone. And we're time for public comment. Okay, Don, you're up. Morning, Don. Morning. Morning. Don. Good to see everybody. Oh, um, state your name, please, Don, and your address. I will. So my name is Don Wellover. I live in Randall on 192 Kiona Road. And I'm here to talk about the CGR proposal or any bottled water proposal, I would say. I, I share the aquifer with the CGR site. And I actually got onto the mapping system and it says that I'm 1.9 miles. From it, so I'm not guessing anymore. At least I know how far I am. I put, I pulled the picture of this map just to kind of help understand where they put this this site, and they put it right in the center of kind of an eight-mile loop that we have. And if you, I use this map so you can see all the little uh, communities. The neighborhoods. Uh, there's Cropsey Drive, and there's the airport, and then there's us up on the Kiona Estates, and then down next to the park, there's a bunch more houses down in there. And then as you start up the east side, recently the state sold that land, and it was converted to 20 acre parcels, and a lot of it went right back into forestry, but there's some new farms in there. And then there's some more smaller housing communities. This, this kind of gives you an idea of where they're trying to move in and how many people are, are directly affected. Now, I took a look at our county development page. And specifically, I was looking at one line in here, and I'll go ahead and read it. It's under population, and it says, when not including the unincorporated portion of urban growth areas, roughly 51% of the Lewis County's population lives in rural or resource areas. Now, that's, that's really important because what we have in our ordinance right now go ahead so this is a piece of the chart that came out of ordinance 1292 and a while back when i came in here i said why can't the county say no well what i didn't realize is for the last 20 years they have been saying no with our code and then in September, it was changed. Now, it came through this body, and it was signed, and we totally missed it. I would have loved to have known about this a year ago. I really would have. Okay, Don, I hate to cut you off, but uh, we got three minutes, so um, maybe you could finish up, and we could continue our conversation after the meeting. Okay. Okay? One, I'll make this really quick. We can fix this. 
of the county by changing those special use permits back to prohibited. And that's what I'm going to go for. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Don. Thank you. Dennis. Hello. Am I ready to go? Okay. Um, hello, commissioners. Um, just wanted to give a... Your name and address? My name is Dennis Jasmer, um, and I live off of Peters Road also. Um, just want to give a little background because um, I did this in my previous life, um, which was I was a businessman, so I was the crystal geyser. When we went to towns all over the United States and put in facilities, the first people we talked to was usually the Chamber of Commerce, who put us with the commissioners, who put us with the economic development people. So I've gone through this whole process from the other side, and I know sort of how it's working. So as I'm watching this go on, um, which is a pain in the ass because I'm here for vacation. I'm retired, I wanna goof around. So I leave and I can't even be involved with stuff because it's going on and it's a pain in the rear to have to try and deal with this situation. So all I'm gonna do is talk about generalities because I can't do the specifics. I'm having too much fun. We also, after we saw the chamber and the economic development and commissioners, we went to the school board roads guys, the tax people, and they gave us tax breaks for putting a business in. So my simple question to you guys is, have the county of Lewis County given any tax breaks to Crystal Geyser in the future? So that they don't have to pay or get a credit on personal property tax, et cetera. We have no permit, we have nothing no action. Well, that hasn't taken. been promised with the economic board or anybody like that. Just want to make sure it's on record because we when, I read, when I read the article about them suing us, I just want to make sure I got some things on record so I'm going to sue you because this ain't right. You need to change that back. It's too much coincidence that that happened nine months ago that the permits were given to change to be able to permit that. That's wrong. You guys need to change that back. And I'm sure you'll hear more of that in future meetings because too much coincidence tells me something's stinking. Okay, so make sure that you understand that we will be after that and that I am aware that one coincidence, yes, two, three, ah, something's wrong, something's up on this because I was in this business and I know what happened to make sure that we were allowed to bring our businesses in. So Dennis, you're, just for clarification though, your question is, what was your question exactly? My question is, down. have you given Crystal Geyser any kind of tax incentives to come into this county? And it doesn't matter if it was for the roads, the schools, there's um, county taxes that you can get, right? and there's others. Um, the schools were the big ones that we used to always get a break on mm. personal property um, taxes for the schools, and we didn't have to pay the school tax. Now, what we did is we gave the school board money. So we, we paid back the community along mm. with the jobs that we, we mm. produced, okay. which was a thousand, the companies I had, by the way, was a thousand employees. And we have hit the numbers that we said. We didn't lie like Crystal Geyser does and tell you that they got all kinds of jobs. I mean, I've heard 30, 50, whatever, it's probably five. Doesn't matter, they won't hit those numbers. So I knew the numbers, we, we did it, we, we made our commitment, but we also got tax breaks from it. Okay. Okay? Thank you, Dennis. All right, thank you. Jim? That's fine. Take your time. I'll be fine. Take your time. All right. My name is Jim Merhout. Uh, I live with my wife at 177 Shelton Road in Randall. 
and I'm here to discuss a, a risk assessment that we just recently did. Okay. First thing I want to tell you is $46 a foot. That's what it takes to drill a new well. Okay. And our particular well log indicates that our well is at 63 feet. So if I try to project to 150 feet, if I have to drill a new well because of the crystal geyser, that is a cost of $6,900 to, to us. Not including $1,000 for an electrician, not including $1,000 for permitting, not including the possibility of having to drip out the casing of our old well and not including the taxes. So roughly speaking, we're looking at a risk of $10,000 plus. And I just wanna project that number so you understand that what's involved in the, the possible losing of our well, not only us, but affects all the people in that map you saw here. And that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Jim. Thank you. Okay, Steve? Steve Jasmer, Randall. Good morning. Um, you guys, the board here, I believe the Lewis County Water Association has done a good job of informing you. Uh, you know how the community feels. You know um, exactly how we feel, actually. The power that you have will be demonstrated when you vote on the code change. We are going to propose a code change tomorrow, to the, which we've already actually done to the Planning Commission. We have specific writings on it, specific wording on it, I should say, right now. And uh, we'll chat with the Planning Commission. They'll go through their procedures, their workshops, meet with Lee, how all of that's done. Uh, we didn't go quite as far as Don suggested in that we suggested only a threshold on the beverage manufacturing in gallons. So it's not where you shoot the whole thing, you just define a threshold there. We, we believe that will protect the rural communities and our water and our lifestyles, which is all that we're after. We're not after anything else, we just wanna maintain our lifestyle, maintain the water, fish, salmon, Indian culture, all of that stuff that goes on in Eastern Lewis County. Um, you'll see that. So what I am hoping for is that you take into consideration all that you've heard from all of the people from all of these meetings and vote the right way. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Renee? Hi. Good morning, <laughs> Renee. First time here, guys. So, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. My name is Renee Cannon, and I reside in Cinnabar. And I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can to try to stay on track. My husband and I have been fighting for our rights and justice since October of 2018. Harassment is not a victimless crime. If you are not familiar with the harassment RCW 1014, I ask and encourage you to familiarize yourselves with it. RCW 1014-010, legislative finding of intent, includes words like serious, intimidate, and, and, and humiliate. RCW 1014-020, definitions include words like knowing and willful and course of conduct. RCW 1014-170 criminal penalty reads as follows, any respondent 18 years old or over who willfully disobeys any civil anti-harassment protection order issued pursuant to this chapter shall be guilty of a gross misdemeanor. The Lewis County District Court Worksheet for Harassment and or Stalking Protection Order, page one and two includes RCW 9A 46110 and 961260 with plenty of clear definitions and meanings, words like alarms, annoys, harasses, detrimental, emotional distress, pattern of conduct, torment, and lewdness. Lewis County Sheriff's mission statement on the Lewis County website states, trusted, respected, professional, public safety agency, committed community partner, 
providing professional service to enhance the safety and security and quality of life in Lewis County. Lewis County prosecutor website in the about the prosecutor statement is enforce criminal laws and work for the victims of crime. In my husband and I's personal circumstances and experience when the Lewis County and prosecuting departments do not do their due diligence and act in full good faith in upholding the true RCWs on harassment, they are one, not following their stated missions, two, re-victimizing the victim, three, empowering the criminal. What is the issue within the system and process between the sheriff and prosecutor's office? One, communication issues for sure not only with victims, but also with between the two departments. Poorly written reports of the deputies who come out to investigate, if they come out to investigate. Three, fear of taking one's freedom with an arrest, which really only results in a minimum, the victim losing their freedom. And the prosecutors are more concerned with their trial record. So I ask you, when the victim has evidence and the accused admits to the action or violation, but lies about how or why, and the victim can prove it's a lie, where is the reasonable doubt? Okay, you're going to have to wrap it up, Renee. As said by Desmond Tutu, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Sadly, my husband and I have seen it, felt it, and been living it for nearly a year. It's called injustice. Thank you. And you have been, and you do have a injunction, correct? A protection we order. Okay. We do. And I know that we have had conversations on the phone. We have, and it has not ended. Okay. Thank you. Do, do you, would you like to leave that Leave copies. that for us? This, uh, your statement? Is there a way to leave a copy? I would be happy. Staff can make a copy for we us. Get, we could do that, yes. Thank you, Renee. Is that all our public that comment? That is, that's all. Okay. I'd like to move to approve the presentation of the proclamation promoting awareness of and participation in the 2020 census. Second. I think you have a copy of the uh, I I proclamation. I hope I do. There it is. Whereas the U.S. Census is mandated by the United States Constitution every 10 years. And whereas census data guides local decision makers in important community planning efforts, including locations for schools, roads, hospitals, child care centers, etc. Whereas census data is used to distribute congressional seats to states. And in the last census, the state of Washington gained a, a, a seat in the House of Representatives as a result of the census. Whereas more than $675 billion in federal funds is awarded annually to states and communities based on census data. And whereas community planners and governments rely on census data to determine where there is the most need for additional social services, such as community development block grants, and who should get the needed funding. And whereas the 2020 census will create hundreds of thousands of temporary jobs across the nation. And whereas the Lewis County Board of County Commissioners is working to increase participation in the 2020 census to support local organizations during outreach in the communities of the census. And whereas the BOCC will use its influence to convey the importance of the census, particularly to community members in economically and resource challenged areas. Now, therefore, be resolved that the BOCC hereby complain, com proclaims, not complains, <laughs> proclaims <laughs> its mutual support and cooperation in promoting awareness of and participation in the 2020 census, done this 22nd, 22nd day of July. And we are forming a group to work on the census to get to those areas in Lewis County that in the past have not been reported. Uh, it is not, it is, the numbers are taken in the aggregate. It is not something that will be used to go after people. It is, at, it is needed to be done so we can know what the population is like in Lewis County. And when we apply for grants, when we 
look at our schools, they use census data to help us make those kind of decisions. So April 1st, next year, it will start and some of it will be done online. We know that some of our communities don't have the broadband necessary, but we have a lot of libraries out there. And so we are also working with Timberland Regional Library to help us do work with the census as well as United Way School District. So this is just the beginning. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I am the county's contact for the census. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Fund. So a motion is made and seconded to approve the proclamation promoting awareness and participation in the 2020 census. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Okay. I move that we approve notice items of resolution 19-205 through 207. Second. Motion is made and seconded to approve three notice items. Resolution 19-205 through 19-207. Good morning, your commission. Commissioners, uh, Amber Caulfield, Civil Deputy Prosecuting Attorney, here to speak on uh, the notice of public hearing and declaration for the potential dissolution of Joint Dykage Drainage District 1, which is Hannaford Valley. This is um, the beginning of that notice of hearing process uh, to be published for three weeks in both Thurston County to their Board of County Commissioners, as well as physically within the district in three conspicuous locations, as well as getting in contact with those commissioners, uh, or at least the known, last known commissioners of Joint Dykage Drainage One, um, to have them be present on August 19th for hearing to see if um, the district should be dissolved or not. And in similar fashion, the next one is for Dykage Drainage One, not to be confused with Joint Dykage Drainage One, which is. Um, the one that is out further in East County, that's Davis Lake. Again, similar fashion that we will have that posted for the next three weeks starting next week in conspicuous locations within that Dykage Drainage District. And we invite anyone for either of those districts to attend that hearing on August 19th to determine whether or not uh, there's a dissolution of those districts. Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. Good morning, Commissioners. Josh Metcalf, Lewis County Public Works Director, speaking to Resolution 19-207. This is to issue a request for proposals for our annual hydraulic, hydro, hydro, hydrologic, hydraulic and geomorphic professional services for projects including Federal Highway Administrative Projects and Lewis County TIP Projects. What does TIP stand for? Our Transportation Improvement Program. Um, the Request for proposals is set to go out um, this week and must be received by 1 p.m. on August 16th. It will be reviewed by the county engineer on our uh, annual basis. Uh, this uh, recommendation is to approve this resolution and move forward with the RFP request for proposals. Thank, Thank you, you, Josh. Yeah. Okay, a motion is made and second to approve three notice items. Uh, any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Passed. Thank you. I move that we approve the consent agenda, including approval of minutes of July 15th, 2019, as well as resolution 19-208. Second. Good morning, Commissioner. Suzette Smith, Chief Accountant, here to present resolution number 19-208. This is the weekly approval of claims against the various county departments. Last week, we issued 214 warrants and direct disbursements. They were numbered 816793 through 816995. The direct disbursements were numbered 893, excuse me, 893, 895, 1048, 1055, 1056, 1062, 1063, 1091, 1106, 1107, and 1111. The reason for the skip in sequence is because they make it through the audit process at different flows. Total dollar amount, $1,676,185.31. Uh, 
In addition, we note the following warrants as a skip in sequence. These warrants were issued on behalf of the special purpose districts. Those are numbered 816717 through 816792. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Suzette. The motion is made and second to approve two consent items. That's the approval of minutes for July 15, 2019, and then the resolution 19 208 approval of warrants. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Thank you. I move that we approve deliberation items resolution 19 209 through 213. Second. Good morning, Commissioner. Steve Walton, Central Services Director, speaking to resolution number 19-209, additional funds to the Southwest Washington Fair Office revolving working account. Every year, the Southwest Washington Fair Office requests and receives a deposit of additional funds in the amount of $1,000 for use in the change drawers at the fair office in support of advanced ticket sales for the fair, associated concerts, and the, South, and the Washington State Garlic Fest. This year, the funds are being requested to be available as of July 25th, 2019. In addition, a second transfer of funds in the amount of $25,000 is deposited into the revolving working account to support gate sales, parking, and other change needs during the annual, uh, during the actual Southwest Washington Fair and Garlic Fest. This year, those funds are requested to be available as of August 9th, 2019. All of the above funds are to be deposited into the Southwest Washington Fair's revenue account at Security State Bank, which is monitored by the operations manager, manager of the Lewis County Treasurer's Office, who also works at the fair during this period. This is an annual transfer of funds to the fair, which will be returned to the Treasurer's Office on or before September 30th, 2019. Any questions on that one? Thank when you. does the fair start? The fair starts August 13th runs through the 18th and the uh, garlic fest spot is the very next weekend the 23rd through the 25th are we celebrating something special this year it's the 110th year of the of the washington uh of the southwest washington fair happy as a hen come celebrate 110 is the theme so yes invite everyone to come out and uh, join in the fun yes thank you thank you steve i have the next resolution is uh, resolution number 19-210, which also involves a transfer of funds. It's funds for the ATM machines at the Southwest Washington Fair. Uh, every year, the, the fair office requests and receives an additional $100,000 in funds for restocking the ATM machines that are located at the Southwest Washington Fair during the annual fair and the Washington State Garlic Fest. As a result of maintaining the ATM machines in-house, using in-house personnel, the fair receives $1 per ATM transactions, which, which gives a revenue of about 1250 bucks during the course of the, of the uh, events. The funds will be deposited into the Southwest Washington Fair's revenue account at Security State Bank on or before August 9th, and the fund is mon monitored just like in the previous resolution by the operations manager of the Lewis County Treasurer's Office, who, uh, who will be working at the fair during this period. These funds will be returned to the Treasurer's office on or before September 30th, 2019. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Walton. Good morning, Lee Napier, Director of Community Development, speaking on the next two agenda items. The first agenda item is Resolution 19-11. This is to approve amendments 10 and 11 with an interagency agreement with RCO to Lewis County. So this is uh, related to Lewis County being the fiscal agent for the flood authority. Amendment number 10 is a time extension. So it will extend the time period from June 30th to December 31st of 2019. Amendment number 11 is a budget increase, which will increase the budget um, by $58,250. And so the work that's associated with that will be to cover Lewis County's time as fiscal agent. Lewis, or excuse me, the contracting with um, the next agenda item as the project manager. Any questions about that? No. We're just glad it's getting done. Yes. yes. The next agenda item is resolution 19-212. So as I mentioned, 
The flood authority has a project manager and that is Scott Fetcher. So what this agreement will do is extend his contract to work with the flood authority um, from July 1 until the end of the year and will increase his budget as well. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Resolution 19-213. This is Distressed Counties 09 Grant Funding for Rural Economic Development and Construction of Mickelson Parkway. An application has been recommended for approval by the Distressed Counties Rural Economic Development Public Facilities Advisory Committee for grant funding in the amount of $1,125,000. This resolution is asking for approval. Proceed with that funding awarding to Lewis County Public Works. All right. Thank you. Matt? Um, and Lisa? Good morning. I'm Matt Matioshi with the Lewis Economic Development Council. Um, you have in front of you a resolution to approve uh, application. Uh, We've made the change in the application. The original applicant was the uh, city of Winlock. The city of Winlock has expressed that they have no objection to Lewis County Public Works or Lewis County being the applicant for uh, the $1.1 million for uh, Mickelson Parkway. Um, the, uh, the project is a, is a partnership. The funding is a partnership between um, Lewis County, uh, Washington State Legislature through our, our, the leadership of our legislators uh, Senator Braun, Senator Orcutt, and uh, Representative Bolt, in particular, uh, securing $750,000 for the construction of Mickelson Parkway. The uh, third partner is the Benaroya Company. I'm proud to have Lisa Goodman uh, from the Benaroya Company uh, here this morning. They're the uh, owner and developer of the 320 acres. The commitment from Benaroya is $1.2 million to construct a, a little over $3 million project. Uh, this is an exceptionally large project for the 0 .09 fund, and I think historically this is probably the, the largest project. Uh, the mm -hmm. benefit, yep. though, is in the, in the investment is uh, 320 shovel-ready acres. Um, the uh, project includes uh, the 3,500 feet of, of uh, roadway, uh, stormwater, and then water and sewer mains as well. Um, so this will uh, provide access from 505 to into the industrial area and also provide uh, and meet the needs of the local community of Winlock that has expressed their concern to uh, keep truck traffic away from the middle high school. Uh, all, uh, this, is, this meets the criteria for the 0.09 fund. It's uh, public dollars investing in public infrastructure that uh, supports the creation of jobs. We estimate will be between three to five jobs per acre uh, of the 300, well, from the, the total of 320 acres. So as it's developed, we're going to see a number of jobs created, likely distribution, logistics, and uh, some manufacturing. I'll and, turn the time over to uh, Lisa Goodman. And what I want to say, it's right off Interstate 5, very prime real estate. Lisa. Good morning. Um, I'm Lisa Goodman with the Benaroya Company, and thank you so much for having me down here. Uh, we are really excited about getting the Winlock site going. Um, I included some information, um, a recent Puget Sound Business Journal article that sh showed the UNFI site that we were the we uh, did the development of and then financing of the new facility, which has actually created up over six po six jobs per acre. Um, and they're now calling Centralia the center of Puget Sound region's uh, industrial development. So we are, are excited to take that out to market for Winlock. We have a top broker team. Um, I also included a site plan that shows what we can do for uh, two I think, I think your papers are hitting the microphone. I think your papers are hitting the microphone. The other one, it's underneath your paper. Can you not? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I also included a site plan uh, which shows we could either do two buildings um, of over uh, 1.2 uh, million or one building of over 3 million. That's uh, the largest uh, industrial land available in uh, Western Washington and Oregon. 
uh, in, in, in addition to other properties, we can develop over 5 million square feet uh, on the property. Uh, the Benaroya Company, as you may know, in the past, we've invested over $1.8 million. We have just spent $440,000 relocating a PSC gas line so that we could develop more of the property. Um, and uh, we're really uh, feel like this site will, will gain a lot of traction with the top broker team, NAI, Peters Town Properties, who's taking this out uh, both nationally and globally to end users. Any questions? I just want to make a comment. I think it was like three years ago when Matt and I were in your offices in King County and talking about Lewis County and what it has to offer. And when we talked about Discover Lewis County and the wonderful area we have here to attract business because we have wonderful trails, we have wonderful farm to table restaurants, we have a lot of things could attract people to locate here and uh, develop off Interstate 5. So Absolutely. thank you for including a lot of that, those documents on your Yeah, site. we agree. We, uh, the, the high quality of life, the schools, the housing, we feel this, this provides a really uh, great attractive area for people to locate uh, their business. Um, and we promote all of that. Those amenities are really important uh, for getting high, highly skilled labor. And these jobs are highly skilled labor. The UNFIs uh, are, are hiring a, a range of people uh, on that property. And we expect with uh, what's going on with um, uh, logistics and distribution facilities and manufacturing um, and working with uh, Centralia College is also oh, a big yes. plus, the mm -hmm. jobs training. So mm -hmm. to support the fact that a 1.3 million square foot building was built uh, on, in Centralia in less than a year yes. is unprecedented. Uh, in fight, or I, I don't want to name other communities, but in other communities, you could take that long just getting a permit. So I think the fact that um, a building from beginning to finalization and goods being moved in is really a, a testament of how great Lewis County is to work with and will make that attractive to any end user that our brokers are, are talking to to locate and win lots. I think the city of Centralia really worked hard to talk about utilities, et cetera, to get the UNFI building together. So great. yes, that's, a lot of, lot of partnerships here. Yeah, it's a great partnership and that the site is truly shovel ready. Uh, so we're, we're um, excited to get going. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much, Lisa. Thank you for coming. Matt, do you have any other comments? Do you have any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so a motion has been made and seconded to approve resolution 19-209 through 19-213. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passed. Okay. Now, we're going into the uh, the public hearing comment, or excuse me, moving into the public hearing. We'll now call the public hearing uh, meeting to uh, ordinance to order, and that is ordinance 13-01305. And first, we'll have a staff report followed by a question and answer period. We will then close the question and answer period and open the hearing for formal testimony. And then anyone wishing to testify, you has a, have a sign-up sheet there. And uh, and then uh, anyone wishing to do that will have three minutes. Uh, would you like to move over to the table, Amber, or are you? So this proposed ordinance 1305 is to add an additional vehicle for methods for uh, getting rid of surplus property or making sales for surplus property. In the prior ordinance under 330-400, you can see that uh, conditions A, B, and C allowed for sale to another government agency. Uh, if there was an emergency to exist that a sale could be done um, and trade for equal or greater value property um, for real property. So we're talking parcels of land here. And this addition here that would be under subsection D 
is to allow for um, another vehicle for sale for the county um, when there's an opportunity where it's a small section of a parcel or a parcel of a half acre or less that there may be an adjacent property owner that it's better suited to have the ability to contract with them. Essentially, we're looking at slivers of parcels where um, maybe a boundary line adjustment would not necessarily be the most appropriate means for um, having that property in sale, but having it opened up to a open public bidding where an individual could come in that maybe is not necessarily interested in doing anything with that property because it's not of value. We're talking maybe a few feet by 100 feet. Um, so there's nothing to really develop or put on it but could potentially put a hardship um, either for the county or an adjacent property owner that may have some interest in that property. This allows the county to approach any adjacent property owners in those circumstances and um, have an opportunity to have sale with them. If more than one adjacent property owner is um, has interest in that property, it allows for bidding between interested adjacent property owners as opposed to open public as a priority means for disposing of that property before going to a public auction on that. So I've got a question for you, Amber. You an actually answered the question. So if Steve and I border a piece of property that we both would have interest in, then how would that process work again? So that process would go to, um, pardon me, it would be, we have here listed, um, sealed bids between the owners of the properties. So let's say that you and your neighbor both are adjacent to a piece of property that the county is looking at surplusing. Um, if both of you show interest in that property, it would go to a sealed bid between you and your neighbor to determine that, as opposed to having a third party come in there that has no connection to that parcel and would potentially make an additional hardship if you or your neighbor were to attempt to acquire that after they acquire it. So in other words, if Steve and I were to bid on that property and a sealed bid, and then all of a sudden, so the, so maybe a third party comes in somewhere out of the blue that are not adjacent property owners, they would not have the ability to? They would not have the ability to do that, no. What this would do is, is if there were multiple adjacent property owners, the county would provide notice to all of those adjacent property owners as to whether or not they would have interest in that section of the parcel. If more than one individual were to express interest, it would only go to sealed bid to the adjacent property owners only to make that determination. Okay. Mr. Cohn, do you have any questions on that? No, no I don't. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Okay, now we'll open the question and answer period or during which the public can ask questions. This is di different than public testimony, which comes later. Now it is time to ask the staff questions. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Ron Averill, Centralia area. Uh, my question here is that this uh, ordinance is as stated in the agenda makes this appear as a surplus property and it apparently is real property that we're talking about, not surplus. We surplus a lot of property in the county. Yes, to make the distinction there, under the surplus code that we have here under, uh, I believe it's 330, pardon me, we have surplus property that is personal property, which is desks, chairs, um, right. vehicles, fleets, those types of things. That surplus code also has provisions for real property as well, and that's where this falls under. So this would be an amendment to real property surplus, so property that the county has determined is surplus and yeah. meets those criteria and then allows us to have an additional vehicle outside of public auction. Yeah, I, that answers my question. It would have been helpful if this had been stated so on the agenda. That well, thank you for asking the question. The whole, whole plethora of things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions? Could you please define surplus property for the county? What's your name? Please state oh, your sorry. name. I'm sorry, Jim Merhoff, Randall, Washington. So surplus property would be property that the county has no use for or it's extended beyond its needed use if we're looking at 
um, personal property. So this is property that has no value or use to the county and was something that they would determine um, through the processes that are found um, earlier in Cree City and making that determination for that. Um, so it just wouldn't be any random piece of property. Um, it would have to be one that's determined as having no use or value to the county anymore. And again, this is for, for sections of parcels um, less than a half acre. Okay, so can I assume the county is the title holder to that property? Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Arnie Davis, Lewis County Treasurer. Um, my, uh, I'll save my testimony for, for that portion. Um, my question is, what is the thought process or purpose behind only adjacent property owners versus anybody who may have an interest in the property? I'm, I'm just curious. So under the current section of the code, um, it is open. If the county were to say, let's make an example of a ditch that maybe the county owns because we have it in receivership, but it's just a ditch. It's like not even a full parcel. It's a segment of a parcel. It's something that maybe the county does not want to continue to maintain anymore, but the interest of, let's say it's the donut hole in a property. That property owner expresses interest in wanting to maintain that section of their property or to have it be part of that parcel in an entirety again. What this section of the proposed change does is allows the county to work expressly with that property owner as opposed to say a third party comes in and goes, I'm interested in that, swoops out essentially from that person that has the whole outside portion of that party and then they have to deal with that person that has no real interest other than maybe getting financial gain. financial gain out of it. This allows for fair market dealing and value on surplus property with interested parties that are truly interested when it comes to real property here and again, is less than a half acre. You know, that makes perfect sense to me. I guess not all situations will fall under that. I think in, I think it needs, the, the law or the ordinance needs to read um, as at, for, for the property owner, owners only in that situation. But there are other surplus properties um, that could come under this ordinance as well and, and probably um, need, need to be addressed somehow in the ordinance as well. And I'll leave it at that. I wasn't quite clear, Ernie or Mr. Davis. Uh, what other items are you talking about? Well, there are other surplus real property right. out there. That I mean, her example of a ditch is is a very good one, and I and I and I concur with with the thought process of, of doing that. But not all of these properties are going to are, are going to fall under that, and and I would hate to see um, anybody who might have an interest in something that was you know, a 0 0.49, 0 0.48 acres somewhere that may not be an adjacent property owner that may have a, a, a value, right. you know, when they store something or something. Sure. They should have that opportunity yes. in yes. those circumstances. I mean, it, it is definitely circumstantial. That's right, you know, it is. the reason I bring that up. Yeah, good point, circumstantial. So I guess my question then, Amber, are if we were to move through with this, with this ordinance, is that gonna create some problems? It should not, based on the language that we have here. If you see um, the end of the first line and the second line, it's, or to just read again, a parcel of no more than one half acre of real property, which in and of itself would have little value because of its size or its shape, may be sold at fair market value to an owner of an adjoining property. So this is for, it's intended in the language there to have, or to not be, you know, 0.49 acres where potentially a house could be placed on that if that's something that would work with building and zoning. This is necessary. This was designed to take care of sections of parcels or, or really sections of parcels that have no value outside of what it is. Say a ditch, um, a sliver, a triangular piece of land that may have a fence that it was old boundary lines before that had been, um, you know, up so, to more. Percent. So not not buildable or not developable or can i can i make a comment to that question yes. and that who are you 
of Eric Martin County Manager. Um, I think it's, uh, it, it, I want to clarify that this is just one more option that you have for, for dealing with surplus properties. Mm -hmm. It's, you would not have to do this. This would be at the discretion option. of the board if you chose to use this vehicle or to go through the more standard surplus property where the, all the public would have the bidding rights to that. So I think that's all, that's all this is, is one more tool in your toolbox. It's not okay. something that you would have to use because the parcel is less than a half acre or any other circumstance. It would be up to you to decide when to use this and when it was appropriate and when it wasn't. You concur. Real quickly. I, I want you to know, I applaud this effort. It, what it does, it, it adds, it takes things out, out of tax title, gets them back on the tax roll, even if it's a ditch, the assessor's office will, will include that in their assessment in the future, and it, you know, it's better for the overall for the taxpayers of Lewis County. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Now we'll move to, we'll now close the question and answer period, and would you like to have your opening statements incorporated into the hearing? Yes, please. Yes, please. Amber. Amber. Yes, say yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just say yes. Just say yes. <laughs> okay, now we'll open the hearing for public testimony, and you have a sign-in sheet, and do we have? It looks Someone empty. Someone signed up. Someone started to sign up. I think. Oh. Yes, okay. yes. I That's think Renee, I know who that I was. I see. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we have none then. Okay, now we'll close the public hearing for uh, the hearing for public testimony. Okay, I move that we approve Ordinance 1305, which would revise Lewis County Code 3.30 regarding surplus property. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve Ordinance 1305. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Eric. Now, announcements. Commissioner Fund? Well, I wanted to say thank you to the Farm Bureau and EDC for arranging the farm tour last week where we went to McMahon's Organic Dairy, the Collets Falls Lavender Farm, Glenoma Apiary, a tree farm and we had a number of legislators with us as we looked at our area and it's really wonderful the amount of agriculture and products we have to offer to the public and I think the legislators were pretty impressed with what we have in our our county and I also want to give congratulations to the Veterans Memorial Museum to having the Civil War reenactment on Toon Road a lot of people were there. People came from all over to watch that reenactment. And it really was a pleasure to see children out there learning about the Civil War and uh, having people on both sides and being able to talk to the reenactors and really learn about what was it like back then. Do you want to talk about the Napa Vine Fun Time Festival? Yeah. Um... We had last weekend there was a parade in Napa Vine and uh, I'm not sure how many how many participants we had, but lots of people out there as usual. Uh, the weather was phenomenal. It wasn't blazing hot, nor it was, no. uh, it was very, very comfortable. And uh, appreciate the city of Napa Vine for putting that on. It's, uh, as everyone knows, I'm sure that you know, uh, to put on any kind of events um, takes a lot of people, lots of volunteers, lots of community support to keep these things going. So. It's very much appreciated for all the organizations who do help and uh, and give up their time. Uh, there's not one person making a dime on this, so it's all volunteer work. So it's very much appreciated. And I think Eileen and Jerry Owens have been yes. working on this like 40 years, and that's a long time to be volunteering for your community on one particular project. And unfortunately or fortunately, however you look at it, when you have kids and grandkids, they are part of the volunteer crew. So. Uh, I can we can all relate to that so yeah very much so they've been doing it for many years so thank them uh, just as on a note here we have a let's see on tomorrow at six o'clock we have a planning commission and I appreciate the Alliance uh, for their uh, for their due diligence on this I think the question was asked 
by me at our last uh, uh, meeting with the prosecutors on moving forward on a number of things and speaking um, speaking to Craig specifically there. Uh, we're in, they're in phase two of this, so uh, applaud your efforts. Thank you very much for that, and I know that there's more to come. Um, Bob, come on up. <clears throat> well, it comes under announcement, so. Yes, announcements. Uh, I'm Bob Gunther. I live at 376 State Route 508 in Chehalis. I heard the testimony this morning about the uh, .09 money, which I'm really pleased that the county is, is doing that to create more jobs and, and better jobs in Lewis County. I would encourage uh, Ben Arroyo and whoever develops that property down there. Uh, there was something said about uh, wages, hours, and working conditions. Uh, without the disposable income in this county, we die. And right now, uh, it's really good to see UNFI coming to Centralia to hopefully increase the wage and benefit packages for those folks. And I would hope in Winlock that we can do the same uh, consideration. Would really be cool if we could have a company in there that would have net neutrality. In other words, if the workers want to become organized, then they have the opportunity to, to sign the ballots and do that without interference from the corporation. So I uh, would appreciate uh, good wages, hours, and benefits for our citizens of this county. It makes a healthy community. Family wage jobs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Peter? All right, Peter Lamont, President, Lewis County Historical Society. Saturday, everybody come to the blueberry pancake feed at the museum. Uh, 830 to 11. Uh, it's it's good. We've been doing it for years and we're in support of uh, Chehalis Fest. On another note, uh, last weekend, we have a group that's housed down here, the uh, Northwest Chapter of the Game Wardens of Vietnam. And we have two uh, Vietnam era patrol boat river, PBRs, housed at Hemp Hill O'Neill Lumber Mill down here. Well, we're kind of limited where we can put them in the water due to the size of the boat. Well, last weekend we had them on the water at Des Moines for the uh, Des Moines Wooden Boat Festival. And uh, we probably, between Saturday and Sunday, we gave about 20 excursions and we got to see a whale. Oh, that was pretty neat out there running around. And uh, we're working on those boats. If you would like to get an up close look and a ride this weekend, they will be at the uh, Maritime Festival in Tacoma and they will be docked at the uh, Maritime Museum in Tacoma, nice. down on Foss Waterway. Uh, there's, we think that there's only five of these boats that are operational in the country, one in California, a couple on the East Coast, and one in the upper Midwest. So it's a rare opportunity to get a ride on uh, something. If, if you've seen the movie Apocalypse Now, that's the boat. I mean, what we have is the boat. It's uh, you know, it's quite a historical artifact, and to get to get a ride on it is pretty neat. So uh, this weekend in Tacoma, and other than that, I think that's good. Thank you. Peter, have you uh, have you had a chance to talk to Rudy Prees, a veteran, Vietnam veteran from Mossy Rock? Mm -hmm. And he was actually on one of those boats in oh. Vietnam. So we, we, have, we have a calendar of events. If somebody needs to know, get in touch with me. Yeah. Um, we have regular work parties down here at Hemphill O'Neill, and we have people coming from Seattle and Oregon. And, uh, you know, they come up to work on the boats, um, and it's they offered to let me take a turn at the helm, and I thought I didn't want to run into a million-dollar wooden yacht this weekend, so I, <laughs> I didn't do it. But, but, uh, well, you'd think they'd well, get out of your yeah, way. Yeah. But. <laughs> yes. Anyway, thank you. Thank, thank you, Peter. Peter. Morning, Sean. Sean. Good morning, Commissioner. Sean Bell, RS Americas, Portland, Oregon. Just wanted to give you a quick update on where things are and, and uh, kind of how everything's coming together. Uh, for starters, um, I had a, a great uh, conversation meeting with uh, Centralia College folks, talking about internships and uh, opportunities for staff uh, education and student education. So we're working through some of that, but um, I think that there's a lot of the, the conversation started now, so it's uh, it's going the right direction. 
Uh, secondly, um, things are moving up there. We've got uh, some grading and some and some clearing taking place right now, and there's a number of local folks that have been hired through the various regional contractors. So that's moving forward. Um, the, we do still have the outstanding piece of the crossing agreement between Lewis County and, and the project entity for the big Hannaford Road crossing there. Uh, uh, the prosecuting attorney's office is, is negotiating and working with that, with us on that issue. And then lastly, um, we've been working very closely with the, uh, the EMS providers, District 1, District 6, and Riverside. Um, they have commissioners meetings coming up, fire board commissioners meetings coming, coming up this week. So we'll be uh, discussing the agreement uh, between the, the districts and the project entity itself. So things are, the pieces of the, pieces of the puzzle are, are fitting together. Any questions about uh, anything up there? understand Thank the you. hall route has changed a bit. Hall route has changed, yes, it has. Um, the, uh, the hauler, uh, it's a long story, but the hauler has opted to use Longview as opposed to uh, Tacoma. Tacoma. Yeah. So, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, but when it's, we're not talking about hauling a load of gravel or, a, <laughs> no. or some logs or a load of logs. We're talking, how long are these? 330 turbines? feet. 223 to 230 feet, something like that. Yeah. Depending on the truck. So. so. And you have about 90 some of those? <laughs> yeah, the blades, there's three blades per unit, so it's, you know, 120 or so. Okay. It's a lot. And coming right through here. Well, no, not through here. Not, th but. A by five. Well, we, yeah. we can see them. So. <coughs> Yeah, When's the estimated of, time that might be occurring, that they might be? Um, I think the blade deliveries start, components and blades start, I think, uh, August 19th. Okay. Or thereabouts. So depending on Vessels' schedule, and that depends on when they can, and the port schedule too, when they can start bringing those in. Okay. So when you get a chance to rest a little, maybe you we could plan an opportunity to go up there and Yes, yeah, see some of the, that is still yeah. in the works, and I want to. Uh, that's that's something that's that's come up numerous times, so. uh, not just with the county folks and the public officials, but also with the stakeholders. Yeah, uh, the folks that are engaged in the Green Direct program through mm -hmm. PSD are very interested to, to see. And, and we haven't we haven't figured out all the nuances of that because it's very difficult and, and challenging for the construction folks. If we want to have an on-site, um, you know, ground breaking or ribbon cutting or something of that nature, um, but I will certainly keep you guys informed as to as to when things kind of come together for that piece of it. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thanks for all. And that. also, uh, thank community development too. I know that everyone's put in a lot of work on this, so very much appreciated. Very much appreciated. Hours, so. hours, hours. Yeah. Um, the last thing I will say is there's a fly-in this weekend up at Packwood. So we have a number of pilots in here. Um, so, and I know that they, well, I've been told, depending on weather, of course, and we think it's going to be outstanding. So uh, if you get a chance, and I know there's blueberry pancakes being served, but also there's a lot of food up in Packwood, too. And if you like we airplanes. Could, and we could start having blueberry pancakes at 8 o'clock at the do museum that. and then make our way. Yes. To pack. What so, time is the fly in You know, and that's a good question. I'm not sure on that. Probably, I guess, probably 9 o'clock in the morning. But uh, when you see airplanes flying over, I guess that's when it's going to start and when they land. So um, anyway, I know that uh, uh, John Rowe has uh, been very, very involved with that. And uh, I know some of the volunteers. So. Anyway, that'll be fun. I'll be up there, by the way. So I'll start here. Okay. Well, I'll probably just go up there first. I'll bring you a pancake. Eat two pancakes okay. for me, Ed. Okay. okay. Uh, any other announcements? Okay. How about a press conference? Do we have anything? Okay. I'd like to talk about some uh, things in the future. Uh, last week, the uh, Washington State Department of Transportation Commission approved the renaming of the bridge near Schaefer Park to Petty Officer First Class Regina Clark. And on September 14th at uh, Schaefer Park, there will be a celebration of the opening of that bridge with that name. And some of you may know that uh, Regina Clark was over in um, Afghanistan and was 
killed over there. She used to work at Fuller's shopping cart years ago, uh, Cedar Creek Youth Camp. A lot of people knew her and Joe Amel, who's a friend of their family, worked tirelessly with Senator or Representative Orcutt to make this happen. To change a name on a bridge is not an easy matter. It had to go through the legislature and then through the Department of Transportation Commission. So that's been established and that's done. So we look forward to September 14th. And those of you who are interested in Timberland Regional Library, they're doing uh, strategic planning around the five county district. And this Thursday, the closest one to us is at 630 in Tumwater at the Tumwater Library. They held one last week at Sulcum that we found out afterwards, but we're gonna make it to the next one, which is this Thursday. So if anybody wants to go at 630 to voice their, what they would like to see from Timberland Regional Library, like keeping our libraries open, uh, please come. That's it. Any, no further business on our agenda. I move that we adjourn. Second. Motion remains second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.